Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fashion Bunker. Very special backdrop in silk for a special unboxing and review from the Yves Saint Laurent uh, Le Vestiaire de Parfum um, range or collection. It's kind of their exclusives range, which could be comparable to the Hermès Saint's range, to the Louis Vuitton range, to the Les Exclusifs by Chanel range, or the Maison Dior range. And uh, it comes in a great satchel, really big one in cotton on the outside, really thick, sturdy one, and then we have also cotton on the inside. Well, it's a more sheer cotton. I'm not so sure if this is cottony or a viscosy type of material. And then inside we dig for the treasure. There is our perfume. It is a grain de, de poudre, or it would be a grain of powder, or just a hint of powder, or a bit of powder. That's what the translation is in English. Also, uh, thank you so much for Yves Saint Laurent for uh, giving me extras from the Le Vestier de Parfum. I received Sahar Saharienne, it's really hard to pronounce this one, a two milliliter spray sample. Then sleek suede or suede. See it in this gold, kind of champagne gold packaging. This one is a splash bottle, uh, a vial, actually, a splash vial, uh, 3.5 milliliter. It's a nice golden hue to the liquid. And then I have also received two samples of tuxedo in their more luxurious edition miniature bottles, which if I can open one without damaging the box, I will show you. Now, before we go on, I have to say thank you to my patrons for helping sustain the channel, support the channel, keep it going. For you guys on Patreon, stay tuned by the end of this video of the unboxing of, of uh, Grand de Poudre and uh, the review of it. After that, on Patreon, the video will continue with first impressions and trying out Tuxedo. So stay tuned for that. Also, on Patreon, the uh, video runs without any ads. While on YouTube, there will be ads in the video. Okay, guys. So, thank you so much for your patience. Let's get to the unboxing of this one. Okay, we're going to open it from the top. Really sticky. This is a sturdier foil than the usual ones they use for their perfumes. As I'm unboxing, I can already discuss with you the issue of the pricing on this one and the sizing. So this is 125 milliliter. And I've checked, you know, YSL has the most terrible, terrible online website because first of all, they don't sell their perfumes online in almost any country, just a few select countries worldwide. And also including in Europe, it's only, only France. And as the UK used to be Europe, it was also in the UK, but now UK is not Europe anymore, but they do sell in the UK. And so the thing is, this one is available uh, as a 125 ml everywhere. And only as 125 ml, except in the UK, where you can also order the 75 milliliter version. Then, the other issue is the pricing. The cheapest price being in France for 210 euro for 125 ml. The rest of Europe, it's 250 euro. So there's a 40 euro markup within Europe. I have no clue why that is. It's 250 dollars in the States plus tax. And then it's 215 sterling pound uh, in, in the UK for 125 ml and the special 75 milliliter that is only available in the UK, not even in France, go figure. I mean, this is a perfume from France. Why wouldn't it be available in the smaller size in France? Anyway, it's 155 pounds for the 75 ml. I think YSL needs to get their shit together because the pricing is just whacking all over the place. So... How do we open this one? We slide it like this, and there it is. Was there anything on the inside here? Yeah, there's like a kind of a spongy material at the bottom of this huge lid. Beautiful sticker. 
really really nice texture there also a nice texture to the box very sturdy thick paper here I love these boxes the white is also really beautiful and elegant it won't stay white for long I get dirty and here we have kind of the look that the Chanel's exclusives fragrances have as well with the bottles being kept in place by spongy form at the bottom except Chanel doesn't have a logo at the bottom here while the Yves Saint Laurent fragrances do and it says Le Vestiaire de Parfum Yves Saint Laurent so that's kind of a nice little detail here at the bottom we see the size of the bottle the ingredients and the infamous batch code which will help us or whoever watches this video in the years to come 62950DG this fragrance was released in 2019 so it's still new this could be one of the first batches produced not so sure but could be so do we have a magnet stop yes we do they are, they all copy each other it's a bit lame actually if you think about it um everybody does these magnet things yet uh, you know it, it's like um chanel is doing it dior is doing it yves saint laurent is doing it I wonder who else is doing it even in, in mass release uh, fragrances they're doing it okay let's spray it on immediately since this is a silk shirt as a backdrop I'm going to spray it away from the shirt, but okay, I put three sprayers on so you could see all over there. Wow, this one is really delicious. Um, it's so delicious that after testing it, I, you know, I walked around the city, I relaxed, I had a drink. I gave it an hour approximately to the, as you should with every fragrance when you purchase it or when you're planning on purchasing something new. You have to give it time. You have to let it breathe and then figure out if you really want to buy it. At least wait an hour. I was in love with it. By the time the hour was through, I was in love with it. Now, granted, it does have a couple of ingredients that I really adore. And one of them uh, is actually in the mid notes. And that would be the sage note. Now, sage is a wonderful plant. I love sage tea. I love to cook with sage. I love the consistency of the leaves. They're so pulpy and meaty. And I love the smell of it. And I also I love the smell of boiling sage because it just permeates the air with something so clean and healthy and hmm, green medicinal in a way, but, but very refreshing. The top notes include pepper, actually black pepper and coriander. Now, pepper is not something I usually like, but granted, and thankfully, in this fragrance, it's blended in so masterfully that you don't even feel the pepper. You don't smell out the pepper. It doesn't bite you ever, but what it does do, it grounds all the other ethereal elements, which we're going to get to right now. So one of them is in the base note, um, in the mid notes, which is sage. And the other one is violet leaves. The leaves of the violet flower, not the actual violet flower. Super fascinating. And then the base notes, suede and musk. That's all Yves Saint Laurent lists. But honestly, <laughs> you, you don't need much more because it says that even in the subtitle here of the fragrance, if we lift it, it says that the accord is violet and sage. Oh, I don't know how to pronounce this in French. I guess it's sage? Sage? Hmm, not so sure. And the sticker in the back has another print, just like all the other luxury houses out there. The stopper has the YSL logo on the inside. Oh, there you, you see it a little bit. And of course on the outside as well. Little sprayer pusher button there doesn't have a logo. Ah, oh, Grande Poudre. Okay, so let's smell it quickly. It's a delicate one. You know, at first when I sprayed it, I thought, hmm, this one is not going to completely, I don't know. You know, I was expecting, well, first of all, let's begin from the beginning, I was in the mood for a new Yves Saint Laurent fragrance. I mean, I'm in love with opium. 
Opium is one of my favorite perfumes of all time. Mind you, the, the, the pure perfume. And I am wearing it on a daily basis. And I'm also, uh, I've been using one of uh, my Yves Saint Laurent bags that I purchased many, many years ago. This is a bag maybe I should showcase on, on my channel as well. But anyway, really feeling that, that uh, YSL vibe. And I wanted to explore their more niche offerings or exclusive fragrances to find something aggressive. I love Noble Leather by uh, Yves Saint Laurent. You could check out the review of Noble Leather. Uh, link is in the card section up there, but also in through the links in the description box down below. I was looking for that kind of punch that Noble Leather used to deliver, but Noble Leather has been discontinued a couple of years ago, unfortunately. So I thought to myself, hmm, something a bit experimental with a intense name, but the concept with an intense concept in the name would be vinyl. I wanted to try Yves Saint Laurent's vinyl, but vinyl has been discontinued everywhere, and again, we can still receive it only in France and in the States. However, most of the time online it's also discontinued. Rest of the world, it's been taken off the market. I don't know why. All of the three night versions, the vinyl, the the other two I can't remember anymore. One was uh one was uh, Velour, and the other one is was Queer, I think. All three are gone. So I was, you know, you arrive to Yves Saint Laurent, they tell you this, and you're just like, okay, you've discontinued Noble Leather, I loved it. I wanted to try these other three, all three are gone. Great. So it was really kind of, you know, sad. So, but then, I started testing out the other ones, and then, as I came across the Sage and Violet, I was like, hmm. YSL isn't really, you know, Yves Saint Laurent isn't famous for this type of approach to perfumes. Okay, let's try. It's probably super soft and delicate, too soft for Yves Saint Laurent. I'm used to, you know, Rive Gauche, Opium, and Noble Leather. But, uh, so this one is delicate, but the trick is, with time, as I'm wearing it, as this hour progresses, as I'm wearing it, it keeps enhancing and growing. It, it's, I mean, it, it actually reacts or acts like an orris root would. You know, Jacques Polge once, uh, with, with Sheldrake uh, together, they, they were describing how 28 La Pausa develops with time, and the more time passes, and the more this orris root blooms and kind of develops into something more and more intense. Similar happens to uh, uh, Grand de, de Poudre. Um, it disappears, or so it would seem. <laughs> it disappears, or so it appears. And then... It heats up on the body, it it figures out how your chemistry is working, and then it starts uh, blooming and blossoming more and more as time passes on your skin. And it becomes more intense until it hits the dry down. It doesn't have this huge transformation from the head notes to the, to the base notes. It doesn't really... You're not going to start the journey from point A and finish it at point Z or Z for the Brits. You, you're you going to start at A, and you're going to finish at A, B-ish. You know what I mean? It's going to be, in terms of olfactory journeys, it's going to be a relatively short journey. But it's a beautiful one. It's so masterfully blended. It's so reassuring as a smell. But when it warms up and when the musk does uh, kind of... Well, when the suede and the musk tickle out from underneath, you know, up to the surface, then you understand why this is an Yves Saint Laurent fragrance and not some other fragrance. Um, Yves Saint Laurent suede, is, he's famous for his for suede. I mean, there's no other really fashion house out there that does suede just like uh, Yves Saint Laurent does. I'm not talking about the quality of the suede, but just the symbology of suede and what it stands for and uh, how it's treated uh, within uh, the uh, DNA structure or design, design structure of, of the Maison. So, what I want to say is once the musk and the suede kind of come up to the surface, well, that's when they blend with the sage and with the violet leaves and with the coriander and with the black pepper. And it's all just so delicious and everything is so well balanced. It harmonizes so well and it stays slightly cool and warm at the same time, but quite passionate in its powdery touch. And in fact, that's why it's just called a grain of powder. It's just 
a hint of that powderiness. Grande de Poudre also has several meanings. Let me shift to the side and show you the image, one of the promotional images that Yves Saint Laurent uses for this fragrance. You could see the duality between the cut that they make um, between the sage and violet leaves and something that we think is a woolen fabric. Well, that woolen fabric has a texture, and that is the Grande de Poudre. Now, Grande de Poudre, which I already stated is a grain of powder, it also means, within the textile business, a term that in English we call the barathea, and that is a woolen fabric sometimes blended with mohair, but mainly used for tuxedos and tailcoats. It could be black or midnight blue. And this fabric is made from finely combed thread. Why does uh, this fragrance have that name? Well, tuxedos is one of the trademarks of Yves Saint Laurent. So this fragrance is supposed to homage the Barathea uh, grain or the uh, grain de poudre, which would be within tuxedos mostly. Now, finely combed wool, this is supposed to resemble the texture of the fragrance as well. After all, this collection is called Le Vestier de Parfum. So, if we do consider Grande Poudre to be a tuxedo type of Barathea fabric, then the smell should also rem be reminiscent of finely combed thread. And this is interesting because it does trickle through. The more you wear this fragrance and the more time passes and the more you're involved with it and the more you smell out its nuances, you spray it before you go to bed, then you wake up in the morning, what's that after smell that you smell? You smell it after the shower before you leave ho home and then a couple of hours later, how does it dry down? Which combinations of this kind of finely woven pattern do we receive, do we get? And it is a finely woven pattern because it, it's a very interesting tapestry that you f you feel the smell going through the, you know, as it states here, the accord, the violet and the sage, but it goes all the way down to, to this suede leathery smell with the musks. And the musk is interesting. It almost seems as if they use the similar musk to a, a similar synthetic musk structure as Chanel's 1957. If you compare the two and you really, really smell them over and over and over and over again on your skin, you're going to notice a similarity in the way the musk behaves. All the other accords and all the other structure of the fragrance is completely different from 1957, but it's just that, I think, type of uh, synthetic musk that's in use in perfumery today, maybe on a higher level, doesn't matter if it's on a higher or lower level. However, there is a type of musk you, in use today that has a similar smell to it, whether it be, you know, used for the Les Exclusives of uh, Yves Saint Laurent or of Chanel. And it is so, so reminiscent, and that's ultimately the reason why I purchased it. It catapulted me right back to the early 2000s when the first three Dior Privés were released and when Dior Homme was released. Like, this is what, this one has that quality of those first releases. I know the first three Privé releases were colognes, but it doesn't matter. I mean, they were more intense than the Eau Parfums today. Just the quality was much better back then. But um, it has that quality. It has that sensitivity or sensibility to um, to that particular type of approaching fragrances that, that we had back then. So it's not, but it's updated for kind of a 2019 version because this one did come out in 2019. But it's so reminiscent of those years and of that type of lifestyle and fashion that I just, and by the way, you know, that was Hedy Sliman for Dior. And then, of course, Hedy passed through YSL as well. And it kind of is reminiscent of that too. So it's, um, it's a really, really good, Good, good perfume. Such good quality. But as all things YSL that we love, or that I love, I kind of have a sneaky suspicion this one is not going to live lo a long life. It's probably also going to be discontinued, so I'm happy I just purchased the biggest bottle, even though I won't be able to travel with this one, because 125 ml is not something you can take on board on a flight. Only up to 100 ml is allowed. Uh, so the 75 ml would have been more appreciated, but this one is so good, I'm going to bathe in it. Especially as spring is around the corner. This one, oof, this one is so good now that March is kicking in and uh, 
you know, slowly but surely uh, spring in some countries of the world is, is kind of starting to, to show its uh, face. This one is going to be so delicious. And the good thing about the fact that it's a bigger bottle, well, you know, I can reapply it. And now it's tricky to reapply it when you're out and about because I'm not going to carry it. It's quite heavy, as you can see how thick the glass is. Uh, I'm not going to carry this one with me throughout the city, but... I mean, eh, I might in the first period, you know, the first period of love when you're like passionately in love with something, you have to have it with you all the time. But later on, I'll probably leave it at home. Um, but reapplying is good because it doesn't have this huge longevity. I mean, it's going to last you four to five hours and it's going to stay quite close to the skin, but you're going to keep smelling it on you. And that powdery touch to it, that grain of powder that it does deliver is it kind of floats off your skin and it's elevated through the air and goes into your nostrils. So you, you're going to keep being aware of the fact that it's present. And it's so well blended that it, it just, you're happy to smell it every time. There's nothing aggressive about this one. There's nothing screechy about it. A lot of the Yves Saint Laurent fragrances formulated today, their mass releases, uh, they're just not... A lot of them have really, really heavy, hardcore chemical tones that are just not well blended or balanced or the whole mix is a little bit quickly done. But this one doesn't smell like that. You can smell out that uh, a good job has been done there. And I'm surprised because I was not expecting something like this coming from, well, the hidden house behind Yves Saint Laurent Beauty Fragrances, which is L'Oréal. But uh, whoever, either they or whoever for them, did a great job because this one just takes you on a journey. You're, you're taking flight on, on, oh God, on a carpet made of sage leaves. It sounds gross, but it's just that beautiful. And it's a sunny sky and there's like very delicate clouds in the air and you're just floating and going places and you're watching from your, from your beautiful carpet of sage you're kind of observing the world all the landscapes the dunes and the desert the canyons you're observing forests you're observing lakes seas trees rivers oh it's it's just really 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 beautiful but most importantly and this is a really cliche thing to use to describe perfume but it's clean that magic carpet ride is so clean and zesty and it's interesting to note that uh, the who the perfumer is, uh, Quentin Biche. I hope I pronounced Biche correctly. It's either Biche or, well, or the other version without the sh, but the ch instead. No, it's it's Biche, I think. Quentin Biche and, or Quentin. But I think, well, whatever. Let's just do it in Ameri Americanized version. Quentin. Now, Quentin, as soft and clean as this one is, it does have a hint of that Yves Saint Laurent nastiness in it. Why am I saying this? Because Yves Saint Laurent was also... Well, he was a naughty boy <laughs> as a designer. I mean, we know about his addictions. We know about all the complications and his also, you know, his life and all the gossip surrounding him, but mostly the addictions. And there's a, a grain of that, not just as a grain of powder, but a grain of something else in there as well. And it's just that beautiful. But to understand a bit better this fragrance and also to surprise you, or I was quite surprised, I mean... The list of fragrances that uh, Quentin has uh, made, it's around 60. And quite frankly, a lot of them, like uh, in the 2018, you know, 16, 17, 18 range. So I'm thinking, how can a person make so many perfumes in such a short time? Can they be that good? Not all of them are. He also did a couple of Paco Rabanne fragrances. But what is interesting to note, he did uh, the Etat Libre d'Orange. He made the Marquis de Sade fragrance in 2016. Uh, and we all know how particularly famous Marquis de Sade is. He did the Experimentum Crucis for the same brand. La Fin du Monde, the end of the world as well, which kind of is a fragrance that would suit very well the times we're living in right now with all the issues we're having with health worldwide. He also made fragrances for Jean-Paul Gaultier, La Belle, Le Beau, and he made uh, Le Mal, Essence de Parfum, and then he made Le Mal in the Navy. He also did uh, Le Liquide, Le Liquide, oh God, the Imaginary Liquids. He did the, the Tapis Volant. 
Interesting that it's the tapis volant. And I was talking about a floating carpet with this one. And then we figure out that he made a floating carpet uh, fragrance and called that way. And for Euro Italia, who used to produce this beauty here, the first version of Dolce Gabbana with the sticker. This is the Euro Italia Made in Italy edition of it. He, for Euro Italia and Missoni, produced a Missoni from 2015 and the Missoni Eau de Toilette from 2016. Thierry Mugler, Amen Ultra Zest, Angel Muse, Angel Muse Eau de Toilette, and so on and so forth. Um, Penhaligon's Terribly Teddy. I mean, we're talking about a bunch of fragrances. So this guy... It's still relatively young. You could, you know, if you Google his, you could see the face and all the poses he has for his business profiles. You, can, you know, all these perfumers, they tend to kind of, they all have a similar type of pose of stance, which is a bit cringy. I think they should kind of update their way of showcasing themselves to the world. It's always this kind of uh, shirts with one or two buttons unbuttoned and a jacket that's also unbuttoned and they kind of, I don't know what they want to exude, but it's, the, can somebody break that pattern? It's always the same. They all look the same. Anyway, that is so fascinating. And as contrasting as this one is to the love of my life, opium, and also as contrasting as it is uh, to um, noble leather, they kind of still share the same DNA. You still know it's them. You, you know that it's it's... They all belong to Yves Saint Laurent. It's it's insane, but it's really true. You smell out that they are a part of the same DNA. And quite frankly, to top it all off, I have to say that, again, I know I'm saying this because, well, I am hunting down that type of perfume. You know, I'm not into the ouds. Not really. I'm not into all the crazy kind of wannabeism in, in niche. So I, I'm looking for my florals. This one is a leafy fragrance. It's not really floral. I mean, you, the leaf of a violet. Yeah, okay. But the sage is, and the leather is what's really amazing in, in here. Um, it's so refreshing to smell something like this. Even though it's not a groundbreaking fragrance. Even though this is light years away from opium. It's not going to change the world of perfumery. It's probably going to get discontinued in a year or two. Well, to me, it's still going to remain a very, very special discovery, very intimate discovery. It's kind of like a more intimate facet of the inner world of Yves Saint Laurent, if that makes any sense to you. And it's so beautiful. I'm so looking forward to wearing it. And you know, the funny thing is, even though Quentin Biche and all these other perfumers, they take these black and white photos wearing white shirts and darker jacket, either gray jackets or black jackets and two buttons unbuttoned, um, this one kind of smells of, of that cotton shirt that <laughs> that is unbuttoned and you're just freshly washed and then you have this wonderful, wonderful perfume all over your body and it just exudes. It's so attractive. It's clean in the right way. It makes you want to kiss somebody. It smells of body, but clean. All the liquids are in the right place and they're moving towards the right direction. Pun perhaps intended. All right, you guys, thank you so much for watching. Again, I repeat for my patrons, you guys stay tuned for the tuxedo first impressions. And for the rest of you, thank you so much for watching. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already on YouTube. I'm also on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Super Deco Ball spelled together as well as on Patreon. Until next time, guys. Love you all. Never forget to never give up on love. Love you all. See you soon. Take care. Bye.